John, something was sort of in the public space in the last sort of week, and you're probably going to draw on the US experience where this is kind of a thing, kind of, but not really, is extending those school hours through to six o'clock. At face value, mums and dads might be okay. I know there wouldn't be a kid in school that would be. Um, but take us through the idea of it and maybe some pluses and minuses. Yeah, this was floated in Parliament this week uh, by a brand new novice uh, parliamentarian. And everybody has to have their thing. So his first speech he put out there that maybe school hours are obsolete. Maybe we should expand them. And a couple of, of good ideas are in here and a little bit of warning as well, I think, Mark. The school hours, nine to three, are primarily from an agrarian society where you had to get up in the morning to do your chores as a child, milk the cow, for example, and you got to get home in time to feed the chooks. Uh, so in that sense, the school was squeezed in to the agrarian society where kids were helpers on the farm and still are in many of just outside this listening area, for sure, still today, all around the world. So is that the right learning time? Well, we've kind of morphed into that now school day is primarily controlled by buses and transportation. We really don't want kids on the road during rush hour. And in certain cities where the buses are the buses that take kids to and from school, they turn around and take people to their places. So buses drive it. In the U.S., the same bus that takes primary kids to school turns around and takes the secondary ones. So if you're going to mess with this, you're messing with buses. Mm -hmm. Educationally, we really don't want to expand the school day. We still we have 200 days right now. That's probably enough wear and tear on our brains, like an athlete can't train anymore. But using the school as a facility, a community center, is already happening in some respects, but could be used more. And I think that's the concept we should take from this. Think of the dark hours at a school campus, and could we expand that? but not asking teachers and principals to do more. These would be third-party providers working inside the school setting. In a, in a very limited sense, John, this, in some slices of life this is happening, if you think of after-school sport. I mean, right. uh, I was involved in a school pickup a couple of weeks ago. I was like, well, it's half past four, and we're, we're picking you up from, um, from some school netball. So I know that in that regard that's happening. Would the suggestion maybe be more of those extracurricular things that you might be, as a, a kid, be involved? with outside of school Partic to sort of come into yeah, that house. Absolutely, and particularly with families really under stress right now with taking on more work, mm. more overtime, more opportunities for single-parent families to have more flexibility. Uh, there's a lot of folks that work the late afternoon, evening shifts, and if there was some flexibility that school could be a hub for that, it'd be great. But yes, that could be even in things like chess and some intellectual kind of games. It could be academics, tutoring and support, learning support, recreational, and uh, other aspects of growing it, where you could learn be cooking, you could learn indigenous art. Uh, having those centered at the school makes sense because then there's not the other transportation to a third site. And most of our schools have fantastic sports sporting facilities. Using those even better could make sense. It's really when it comes down to it, Mark, who's going to pay for that? Because those me that's become staff working outside of the school day as paid employees. The government has funded some of that now, and families, many of them, are eligible for after-school care. It's right there at the school, particularly in primary schools. They have some after-school care. But if the government's going to do that, it's got to come out of a coffer that would come out of other tax money. If it's going to be privately funded, you get into equity issues of those families that really need this the most— uh, that would love the piano lesson to be at the school rather than the piano teacher's home probably won't be able to afford it. So it's going to come down to how we pay for it, but using those facilities more and taking advantage of it. And uh, even people like um, LeBron James, the NBA superstar in the U.S. that plays basketball, he started a school which had parent education in the evenings. And they had child recreational activities in the school. Now he started that school, which is giving the mums a chance to come back and basically do a TAFE qualifier at their kids' school in the evenings while the kids are playing and being taken care of by um, folks that are hired basically as babysitters to do that. All right, so let's look at the other side of that equation um, because you, the argument could very well be made, well, look, we've done the school and I know the, the extra stuff you could still do there, but what about the idea of let's get you home from school, the idea of play, um, choosing which friends that you interact with, building your own friend networks away from school, um, just exercising, even if that's just getting on a bike and going down to the shops, um, the things that I know that were very much a part of growing up. So are we, if we go full on into this model, are we at risk of just having, finding more reasons to keep you at school longer? 
Mark, that's a profoundly amazing question. And I, I think so. it's I the risk. It was pretty good. Yeah. It's the <laughs> risk we have. Quite often, that's like an old understanding of families and the ability to be home at four with your child and saying, go out and play, dear, and we'll be there. Most families right now are working so much trying to keep up with inflation and grocery costs and electric bills and mortgages that they've taken on the extra work that that may not be possible. Uh, one parent or you know, one parent family that might be a neighbor might be able to be available in the after five or six. But this is that bridging time in the late afternoon that most families need support. But you're right, it does take away that community centeredness and it does allow us to maybe pull away from the natural relationships that happen just with the kid next door. But in a community school focus, that school's just down the block anyway. It's when you start going to school a long way from home that that's really a problem. But you're right, it is a tension. But for working families, we gotta help them out of this jam because right now we don't wanna leave kids alone at home. The safety issues are really hard. And also what's out there on the interweb uh, is a pretty risky business right now. We really need kids monitored and safe. And school grounds and in school buildings, at least we can sort of assure that. All right. Well, it was a topic that was brought out by uh, Jordan Lane, the MP for Ride. So we'll see uh, what sort of traction this one gets, John, over the next sort of while. As always, thanks for your time. Have a great day. Thanks, Mark. A professor of education from the University of Newcastle, John Fischetti, on the concept, at least, of uh, stretching like an accordion, stretching out those school hours a little bit longer. Have uh, let that one sit around in your brain for a little bit. Two in your RFM, 103.7. A broadcast service of the University of Newcastle.